Welcome to the Fighting on Film podcast, the podcast all about classic and obscure war movies, from the Normandy landings to the days of chivalry and swords. If it's been captured on film, we're going to try and cover it. I'm Robbie of our own military history. I'm Matthew Moss of Historical Firearms and the Armourer's Bench. Hello and welcome back to Fighting on Film and this week we are back with our series where we bring together some experts to look at a certain piece of kit or weapon from various films and this week we are very pleased to have our good friend and guest that's been on before Rich Fisher of the Vickers Machine Gun Research Collection and Association. That guy oh, is shaking his head what did I get that wrong? Collection and research. C4R. Collection and oh yeah every time. Every time. I've only been a member for like three years now. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's bad. Wow. It's fine. I forgive you. I'm on your part. It's all right. You, it's right. Maybe you should just, you just renamed it. It's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let company's house know. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Change all the, all the merch and the branding. Um, anyway, we're joined today by Rich, and he's going to talk us through some of his favorite war films that involve, and maybe, maybe some not war films, we'll see, um, that involve the Vickers gun. I mean, for the uninitiated, I mean, if you're listening to this episode, you probably are aware, but for those out there that aren't, could you give us a brief, and I mean brief, with this is the expert, we talk, the, the oracle of Vickers guns here, folks. Um, but if you give us a brief rundown of what the Vickers gun actually is. Yeah, so um, I'll do the first three pages of the thousand page book, <laughs> not, not a lot. Um, I'll do the first three lines. Yeah. So water-cooled, medium machine gun, belt-fed, uh, tripod-mounted, sort of totemic, iconic, uh, you know, gun of the British Army from 1912 to 1968. Loads of armies around the world used it. So it can crop up in pretty much any film set in the 20th century and, and be right, really. Um, and in most cases, it never is, which is, which is quite ironic. Um, but it, it's there. It's something that is you know, 120,000 of them made around the world in a few different places. Um, most people know it. Most people will recognise it, even if they don't know it's the Vickers, perhaps. Um, you know, they'll see it there on the tripod. They might think it's a Browning. They might think it's a Lewis. They might think it's like a Like the Station Master from Get Cracking. Could do. Yeah, absolutely. It's a gun with um, knobs on. <laughs> it's a gun with knobs on. <laughs> um, that's how I should have and started. that form it, that goes past. It's a Vickers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shaking his head. Obviously uh, fired one. Either. Someone never served. <laughs> yeah. That damn <laughs> so, postman. So you'll recognise it, um, you'll spot it and go, wait a minute, is that, is that Vickers? Um, and probably it is, uh, you know, even if it's not meant to be a Vickers, even if it's got some dodgy muzzle attachment on the front, um, yeah. even if it's in a flipped negative, you know, flipped film, uh, you, you'll get there eventually. So, yeah, it's a pretty iconic piece of kit. Yeah, it is. And, and as, we, as Rich says, it pops up in loads of, uh, of films. So, um, Matt, do you want to kick us off with one of your depictions? Yeah, I I suppose my favourite that's a bit weird is Batan because it features in there alongside Brown and M1917s. Um, and it's a, we talked about when we covered the movie, actually. Um, mm. You know, they they tap, they uh, they run the guns as they probably should be, you know, according to American doctrine and, and that kind of stuff. And it's all direct defensive fire. Um, it's, a, it's a last stand movie, studio bound, really well made little, um, little last stand movie about Bataan and it randomly there's about I think there's two Vickers and one Browning or at least yeah maybe three actually in there as well um I don't know whether that's one of the films that's guilty of flipping the negative that Rich was alluding to earlier I can't it remember could be. offhand no um, I'm just I'm, I, it isn't actually um oh good. which okay. is which is which I'd almost expect it to be because it's mm. almost like they're supposed to be Brownings mm, um, exactly you know they're portraying Brownings in this, so my my very extended head canon is that the 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 Colt Vickers M nineteen fifteen they are indeed yeah um, they which they are studio the studio guns I assume that they are actually nineteen yeah. fifteens but in my head the 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 American forces in Bataan have got Colt Vickers I didn't, they didn't I don't think but that would be how I would mentally explain it to myself if it was going to be really annoying for me which it isn't <laughs> <laughs> no I don't I, I don't think they are. Um... You know, guns that were, they had there at all. I think mm. it's the fact that you know it's a wartime produced film, and yeah. there probably aren't that many Browning M1917s in studios at that point yeah, because they're still yeah. in service. Mm. So you know, the Colt, the Colt made Vickers is out of service. So they are 
or not readily available, but they're much more freely available to be yeah. used in films. Well, they, they um, tend the to studios. crop up in a lot of a lot of that period yeah. of films and beforehand. Don't know whether they're all cult vickers. I assume they are. I assume there was a, a studio armory that got hold of a number. Yeah, of them. I can't. I won't plug the books too much. Um, but you can never forgive me for doing so. Um, the Pride of the MGs has a chapter on yeah. the vickers in film, and they all seem to be owned by just one or two studios at the time. Mm. You know, I think this is that period where studio, well, a bit like today, really, a bit, you know, studios don't hold their own guns. No. Um, they'll always hire them in. And there aren't that many studios with, you know, with heavier machine guns, everything sort of smaller. And, um, you know, that seems to be the case here. The same guns will p- crop up everywhere. Um, and, and one of the things about the Vickers is it's really easy to get blank firing. Not necessarily very well, but it is really easy to get blank mm. firing. So, um, and to not make it look, movies. yeah, not make it look too silly when it is blank firing. So, I yeah, that isn't sort of it. All, it also right plays a really good there. enemy gun, where they they it, it doesn't look like a Browning, so it's oh that's definitely a Japanese machine gun, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. You get the weirdly, I like the mocked up weird sort of thing you get in um, Objective Burma, which is clearly a Vickers, but it's made to look like a thirty caliber. Oh god, yeah, completely forgotten about that one. Yeah, it looks amazing. That's probably another one of those same same few guns. I think it probably is, yeah. But they put like a whip, big long barrel on it. Well, they mocked it up to make it look like a, an air cooled 1919. That's it. Rightly. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Which is mm. really weird. But there's they those same guns I think pop up in Wake Island, which is a, a movie I watched recently with Brian Dunleavy. Yeah. Uh, about about the Battle of Wake Island, and there's I can't pick. I've seen Objective Burma a number of times. I can't picture what it's looking like now but um i don't think i've seen wake island so that's one to go on there. no it's it's yeah, one you never see on tv it's weird yeah I, it, I got reminded about it the other day when i was watching i think it was an operation room video on wake island oh okay like, have they ever made a movie about that and it turns out they did so rich it's your turn to pick i'm gonna i'm gonna save my favorite for a bit but i i think absolutely yeah so desert rats so mm. that australian depiction um which, which is quite close to my favourite. It's certainly one of my oldest, one sort of first war films I remember watching, really, and certainly one of those earliest ones with the Vickers. And uh, it's it's there in, in in the line where, you know, the officer goes forward and meets his Australian troops for the first time, classic sort of defensive position set up. Um, I think what you'll find is a the theme of my favourites are where they're almost in the right role, actually, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and, and, and or in a believable role. So... Uh, yeah, you've got that. You've got it in the in the line with an Australian infantry battalion, which they were. Yeah. You know, the, they had their own machine gun platoon still at that point. They wouldn't necessarily be like singled out and sent around different companies as an extra gun, that, and just letting letting any drunk bloke, you know, in, in <laughs> charge of it, which is what happens in Desert Rats. Let the drunk school teacher look after it. It's fine. Oh God, um, yeah. But but then be, drunk school teachers. Yeah, well. that's right. Um, uh, that is Long John Silver in Disney's Treasure Island. Exactly, and the reason, yeah, and the reason the that Disney pirate, link. <laughs> and the reason that pirates sound like they're from Bristol. But anyway, but then at the end, the Vickers is there, right in the center of like the final scenes, out in that isolated position, right in front of the of the hill position on the road um, yeah. to, to Brooks. So it's it, it's it's there. It's not being used. You know, the main sort of scenes of the film don't involve it. They're about the raid and everything that takes place mm. onto the uh, fuel dumps. It's not involved there at all. But it's just this. It almost bookends the action in that when they you know, first enter the line, the vicars in its defensive role, and then when the end of the film, you know, when those last scenes happen, uh, it's there, stuck out in the isolated sort of sentry post, really, um, and. You know, it's just it's just a classic classic place for it to be. Yeah, yeah. I I rewatched it today in anticipation of this because I knew you pick it. Um, and it struck me that they had it on free traverse, and they definitely weren't firing twenty five round service bursts, <laughs> were they? No, no, not at all, not at all. But um, then which who does? Not quite. Who does? Not quite done. Yeah, I, I know they were giving it the full two hundred and fifty round burst. Yeah, um, and. Um, I, it, it's a, it is a good scene because you've got those tanks coming on and one of the guns gets knocked over and the crew gets killed and they try and get it back up. Mm. But what the part I really liked about that in that first sequence with it is the number two clobbers a German that's about to jump into the trench with, the, with an ammunition yeah, box. With a belt Ooh. box, yeah. Yeah. And I, that is, I mean, that is, I've, I've read accounts of that 
you know, hand to hand fighting with the belt boxes and stuff like yeah. that. Because that, wow. wow. you can swing one, you know, it's yeah, better than a handbag on a Saturday on. night. You know, True. It's, um, yeah, it's going to have a massive impact in the side of your face. Box belt Vickers number eight, Mark One, you know, impressed into the side of your forehead is going to, uh, you're going to realize what you've been up to. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's uh, the, the bit where I, the bit where it gets knocked over is quite, again, it's one of those things that you can, the date of that film and, and everything, that's not necessarily from direct from personnel accounts, but it's probably built up from experience. Yeah, there's going to mm. be people on set that will have been able to advise. Yeah, there were people on set from the, um, or was it Rats of Trabut that were, you know, then in that film. So that's the wartime film. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to have that experience and you know, guns get knocked over. That That's in those you know, personal narratives of, uh, of that period as well. So yeah, it's quite, it's quite good. And, and the fact that, go on. And the Germans have them as well. In that movie. Yeah. So when when the when the Respect. infantry comes up behind the tanks, because the tanks have gone through to get clubbered by the artillery. Um, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. All well, signposted right. in the beginning of the movie. Then the infantry come on and then two chaps run up with a with a Vickers and he sets it up in like a, a defilade. Yeah. Um so the gems have got them as well in that movie. Oh yeah. Well I'll have to go back and watch it again now. Um which is <laughs> That's never what this a podcast hardship. for it's just making never a hard over shit, and over actually. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, that's certainly what well, that's one of my background work films. You know, if I need to get is on it? with something, stick a film on that is something I've seen before, but I'm quite happy. You know, it's one mm, of those, yeah. you know, it's like historian white noise. It's something <laughs> that just keeps you going. <laughs> really um, true. Yeah. There's, some, there's some films that are just those historian white noise films. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's so true. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I love that film anyway. I, I think I think there's so much in there. Um, beside the Vickers, but uh, yeah. the fact that it's the fact that it's there, it's with the Australian troops. Um, you know, just a reminder that those guys had them in different ways. Like I say, they had them in the infantry battalions, um, but they also had their machine gun battalions. So at that time, um, an Australian ninth Australian Div were able to field like ninety six Vickers MGs wow. Um, wow, across okay. the Div, compared to forty eight in a British um, mm. Div. So yeah, quite quite the firepower. Mm. So moving on to me, I, I mean, just quickly, I really like the movies that don't have them in as actual character use weapons, but have them as stock footage. Mm-hmm. So, um, so following on from our peer episode, I can fit theirs is the glory in because there's a two second section where you see the footage of the paras using the Vickers gun, um, but it's stock footage and it's cut in. Um, I, don't, I can't remember exactly when it's cut in, but it's in there. Um, it, it might even be when they're fighting around Oosterbeek. Mm. Um, I think they use it there. And then there's actually um, footage of it being used at Kahima, but it's used in Jump Into Hell, which is a Indo-China BNDM Fu movie that oh, we really? talked about it's... last week. Wow. Yeah, it's cut That's in. Cool. It's So they're meant to be, the way they use that footage is they're meant to be uh, Viet Minh firing Vickers guns at the French. But it's clearly Kahima footage. If you, you know, if you know, you know. So, so British at Kahima. Then, British, sorry, yeah, British at Kahima, yeah, and they've British got their. Kahima. Sorry, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the hats, oh, the, wow. the, the field hats that do that, that knock me off kilter there. But that's yeah. like some dodgy War and Peace representation of Indochina. Yeah, it's um, a really you know, bad. Vietnamese it's a really troops. bad. It's, it's not a. It's not a. I mean, you BNB can get away film. with them being French because the French wore hats. Yeah, um, but, but no, it was the, definitely meant to. It was the, definitely the, at the end where the French were getting beaten. Wow, it was. It's interesting. I just think it's interesting that it's a such an iconic weapon that you can fit it in through stock footage as well. But maybe we should talk about CG Adatville because it's, it's probably one of the later depictions of the Vickers gun. Bar one, the most recent, I'd have said, yeah. Yeah, of course. Link all the work that we did on CG Adatville. It's probably the um, most modern depiction of the Vickers as well. Yes. That's you know, still in the 60s. The Vickers is in yeah. service with the British until 68. You know, the Irish still have it. The Irish taking it to the Congo... Um, is uh, it's, well, it's not going to be their last use of it, um, but it's probably their their only combat use of it, actually, mm-hmm. uh, in terms yeah. of Irish actions and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it, it is interesting to see it there. Uh, it, it it does sort of have its own hero scene as well, doesn't it? It Matt? does. As you were saying, yeah. Exactly. The reading around it I did when we were doing all the, the, the myth-busting around the, the sniper Brenner, et cetera, 
a year ago. Um, the, the Vickers apparently was was um, it, rather than being jeep mounted on a on a pintle mount, it was mounted in their armored cars. Yeah, um, it, as the tour armor for, for their armored cars. Four, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was Ford fours. armored cars. Um, but in the they movie, them in, as you say, yeah, and, and they had them. So in in terms of, I think it's thirty six battalion. In, in terms of that that battalion um, and the other Irish battalions that were about, um, they had them in that moving them around in their little handcarts. So mm. yeah, you, wow. you you guys have both seen the the handcart um, that we've got here. Which is yeah, an Irish, yeah. like late 1930s, early 1940s, made, um, locally made thing, um, you know, of which they made hundreds, uh, but they still had them serving there. You're dragging them along in toggle ropes. There are other photos. I didn't that know they had them. Exist. That's really yeah. interesting because, yeah, um, um, when I, when, all, a lot of the accounts focus on just the, the armor car mounted guns. Yeah. It would have been really cool for them to include one of the carts in in the movie, then, rather than <laughs> rather than have that hero scene where the, the, land, the jeep the gets turned yeah. over. Yeah, the landing gets turned over, and they engage that um that aircraft. If it had just been some lads just turning over a cart, and just tipping in. a Vickers out of the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a shame that off film, the side I think, because the the things they didn't do and they could have done were almost better than the things they chose to do. Like yeah, it's still it's a good cars, movie. It's still a decent cars. movie. Yeah, but it's, yeah it's there's a, a lot of stuff they film. could have done that would have made it even yeah. better. But we were talking about this before we began recording, and and I asked Rich, would the Vickers have functioned at that angle with it on its on its back essentially? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit hard work. Um, to, to so probably not in all seriousness. Mm. I mean, what you've got is because the extractor requires gravity to fall when you pull the crank handle back or when the gun's fired. So if you fire, if you've got anything like near vertical um, or ver- certainly beyond vertical, the gun doesn't work upside down. You know, that's one of the reasons why you don't fly a plane upside down when it's got synchronized Vickers, because it won't work. Um, just just but, one of the many reasons I would imagine. What a, yeah, 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 don't fly <laughs> your plane upside down. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the extractor requires gravity to drop. So right. um, if that is if if there's anything that impedes that, you know, even at the slightest, it's not going to work properly. You know, you can you know, it'd be something to try again. You know, yeah, is to um, you know, just to see how far back it does work. Um, but you know, it, it clearly does work in an anti-aircraft role. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, not ninety degrees though. But yeah, no, but no. that sort of certainly <laughs> and and, and the, just the the stress on the feed. As well, because mm. that's just a trailing ammunition belt at that point. Yeah. Um, there's no you know, the feed. The, the feed block won't. Isn't it? Yeah, the feed block won't drag it at that angle. There's not enough power in the feed block to be able to do that. Um, yeah, it's going to cause either like a number one stoppage where it just stays all the way back, first position stoppage all the way back, mm. or a third position stoppage because of the feed. You know, it's if it's firing a couple of rounds, then you'd be happy with it, but. Um, you, you want more than a couple of rounds when there's yeah, like it does get aircraft. Quite the burst. Yeah, it's not a full two hundred and fifty yeah. round, but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's it's a cool scene. But that it's just brilliant. occurred to me before we began yeah, talking. Probably, about la- it. I'd say most recent Vickers war film scene. Yeah, I think it probably is. The mm. King's Man does not count. Um, yeah, no. as, as, the, as that, you know, it gets some good action in that film, but it doesn't. Um. I think one of the things to remember as well is Vickers look great in films, but as we've experienced, they are an absolute pain to get running reliably on blank. Um, yeah. And so, you know, actually, if you're a producer or you go now, nah, want the ones that work really easily. Yeah. Um, and if you're armorers, you provide guns that are really easy to get work in and clear yeah. and everything. You know, they do, they do mm. crop up now and again, but not very often for lots of firing. So before we move on, I think maybe this is a big one. The wild geese. Uh, I can't remember the reasons why completely, but it was like small arms treaties and getting guns into Africa at the time. Um, but they couldn't get a Vickers, so uh, a functioning Vickers. So it's actually a Madsen M1950. Am I right with that, Matt? The submachine, the submachine gun? gun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so um, it's the submachine gun um, fitted inside a breech case and a Vickers. And then the ejection port is on the right hand side of that, which when the round the nine mil ejects, it hits the belt and makes it look like it's moving. 
um, which is quite uh, a clever thought. So it you, is, isn't you know, it? So that's like, how do we make this simulate as much as possible? Yeah. Um, and the mag sticks down between the um, between the the crosshead, the open space on the crosshead as well. So the mag can be changed um, quite easily. Yeah. So it's quite it's quite remarkable. It's um, quite clever. Yeah. That, yeah, they went to that effort as well. So again, I don't know why they couldn't get a Vickers in Africa at that time. Probably quite a lot of them about a whole period where there's lots of different treaters and yeah, small arms lots treaters and lots and disarmament of, of and stuff happening. And, yeah. So yeah, it would it would have varied. So yeah, that's a really interesting um Vickers that isn't a Vickers, but actually is a Vickers you know, on yeah. the outside. Um it's uh, it's one of those things as well that you know hopefully we'll be able to explain more about in the future um but it's mm. yeah it's about how that was done uh but it's it, it it's properly iconic at the end of that film as well isn't it yeah, of course it, is, yeah. Yeah. it uh T- it turns really up out of nowhere is. and just starts laying down Can't yeah it's like who was carrying great. that you yeah know, it's like did they did they get it well, off the plane I think we summarized that, that they found you know when they they find that vicar and they find yeah. a plane. We some me and Matt and Woody when we did it at Christmas a few years ago. Yeah, I think yeah, we yeah. summarized that it was just in that town somewhere. So the vicar had a vicar's. Well, that's what exactly. we think. I think that's what we said. <laughs> yeah. But if, if you go back and watch that, scene, they all do. Yeah. Well, when they're firing it now, when now that because you Rich told us this off 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 uh, recording. So when, I was watching the scene earlier, and there is the guy who is the number well de fact number two. He's shaking the belt as they fire. And you only notice it because you have to, you have to keep your eyes on him because he's obviously not your focus. And when they when when Rafer takes his you know moves his hands off the gun, the, the guy's just still shaking it just so it doesn't sync up properly. Oh really? But it's only oh, a very well split it. second. But now you've said it, I was like, oh, okay. There's great stuff there, isn't there? For mm. you know, if anybody ever wants to simulate a vicar's firing. Just get the number two to wiggle the belt a bit. <laughs> it does yeah. do, you know, it get does a nice enough. close up, yeah. close up, like really close, tight shot on the number two. Just wiggle about a bit. The, you know, the and if you do that from the right angle, you won't see the crank handle flying backwards and forwards. No, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it, it, it is a great idea. Um, you know, it's, it's really it's good. proper creative stuff. And yeah, it is. Let's say the gun comes out of nowhere and suddenly creates this whole. Um, you know, scene and they do start to run about with it as well which i think is also yeah there's they do yeah they move across the air yeah, to the m- it least absolutely. useful position possible <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's um, in the exact and, line of like do... exfiltration of everybody they're firing through <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they pick it up properly if i remember they rightly they I pick they, you know it's like yeah, rear like, leg yeah. front leg with one number two and then the number one on the other side well, there's so enough you... guys that have served on that shoot that probably would have just known it Yes, yes and no. I mean, the thing is, to know your Vickers drills properly, you had to be in the machine gun platoon. It wasn't like the Bren or the rifle or anything like that. You know, you, you will have had... Had, had... would have known how to handle it from, uh, from yeah. C.S. Sand, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> C.S. Sand, yeah, he'd have been spot on. Uh, but actually, in C.S. Sand, he really knows how to handle it. You know, he does the tapping and everything quite right. So um, that might be a useful segue onto talking about C.S. Sand, perhaps. For me, my favourite depiction of the Vickers gun is C.S. Sand. I think we even talked about it it was our first episode in the, of the new year um, earlier this year and I, I call it Percy Herbert's last stand so at that point in the film Percy Herbert's character has been injured and he knows that he's slowing them down and the patrol the patrol have to get back to HQ to tell them about the tank battalions they found and he says leave me here leave me with a gun um, I'll hold them off for as long as I can paraphrasing so they build him this little gun pit um, and he's he just makes a last stand and he um, knocks the gun off, which is really nice to see. So I don't think many films that I researched for this, they bother doing that at all. Um, there's the, there's yeah, that they, one they, guy in Bataan that does it. Yeah. yeah oh, wow. Well, okay. No yeah. No, I mean, normally loosen the clamp off, swing in traverse, mm. which means swing from side to side as large as you can, <laughs> yeah. trying not to hit the thing you're aiming at. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, tapping the gun left to right is. Um, you know, it, it probably takes somebody that has fired it mm. to know how to do that. Um, and or, or at the very least, somebody on set. Yeah, because they were the, yeah they were helped by the British Army that were in um, yeah, Libya, Libya at the time. So it, either Percy knows or someone's shown him and someone who really does know has shown him. Um, and he fires bursts as well at them. 
which is yeah, really he does. nice. Yeah, um, and he taps between. So, yeah, you know, that really is, good. so the, the cold concept of firing a burst, relaying the gun, tapping off, and it's all actually the best drills that you would have with firing a Vickers. So okay. you, you, you can't fault his drills in doing that. It's no. almost like if he'd have got, if he genuinely knew how to do that, and there was a stoppage on set, it's almost like he'd have cleared it himself. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm all right. You just crack on. Um, you stay over there at the wake. You know, I'll deal with this. Uh, he knew exactly what he was doing. It's quite the amount of war movies that Percy Herbert did during his career. He probably <laughs> did know it off by heart. Oh, yeah, oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. it's just a great scene, and that you get the whole gardener's question time bit, and then the the radio gets kicked at the end because he, he, you know, he does get killed. Um, and you get the lovely shot where they hang on his family that he's put in the the tripod. Yeah, uh, yeah. picture of his family. Yeah, it's really, yeah. it's a really nicely shot scene. Um, it's probably the best scene. It's in the that best movie. part of that film, actually. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, and the Vickers knocks out an armored car in that film. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I mean that must have like super speed armor piercing ni- mm-hmm. ninja um, bullets. Mark but yes, Z Z Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's super size Zs. Um, well, it, it is because the, the you know three or three Vickers mounted on uh, long range desert group trucks. Absolutely right to see that. What they didn't have in the film is the 0.5 inch Vickers, which would have knocked out that armored yeah, car quite exactly. happily. Mm-hmm. That armored car would not have been running up and down. Um, <laughs> no. So yeah, that's our project for the winter. You get in a 0.5 inch firing. We have a fire fireable 0.5 inch now. So that'd be quite something. Um, yeah, uh, that you know, it, it's the one thing that LIDG would have had at that point that mm-hmm. would have been capable of doing that. But the um, the thing that's in that, that the Vickers on. I can't remember if it's on the Percy Herbert one, but I know I remember spotting it uh, when you did that episode was Dave um, shortened the feed block for the short nose blanks um, yes. or the short length blanks. So they've put a um, sort of flap or so, it's a flap or uh, an insert in the feed block to make them feed properly because short nose doesn't feed very well. So they're in stripless bouts, short nose blanks. Um, and if you put short nose blanks in without, you get many more stoppages uh so they, they've put they've adapted the guns to fire those and my thought is that you know, long nose blanks weren't really around that much then um because they were using bulleted blanks quite a lot for the brands uh and i think it, it might be in that film where you've got the long uh, muzzle attachments on the brands to make them a bit of pipe isn't it Matt I remember yeah, you telling yeah, me yeah. Like pipe, yeah yeah so um, that actually might be a shredder for the bulleted blank as well so the bit of what bit of wood that comes out of the Bren blank um, basically gets knocked by the end and then you know, hits the dirt or just breaks up so that it doesn't fire very well because you can do quite good groupings at 100 yards with them um it, but it does I, I think those those don't work through the vickers because the you need a solid stop at the end of the vickers for the blank to cycle properly otherwise you lose too much gas so they're having to use short nose blank which would have been the standard rifle blank of that period and before and therefore they've got to put this um stop in the feed block up the front uh, to make it work and cycle properly so, and not get those third position stoppages. So it's quite, it, you know, from a lovely film, great stuff, lots of geekery around Vickers. Yeah, guns, lots of it? interesting Excellent. bits that yeah. probably no one's ever noticed until now. That's exactly Nobody what Nobody needs to know that. Um, yeah. Nobody ever needed to, <laughs> but now they do. So, yeah. Thank God for fun. That seems to be that seems to be the story of my life about telling people <laughs> about the Vickers. You didn't need to know it, um, but now you do. Hello there, sorry to interrupt. I wanted to let you know that you can now join our supporting cast over on Patreon. As thanks for your support, you'll be able to help us pick films, submit questions for guests, have first pick on brand new and exclusive merch, and much more. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. You mentioned Last Stand. Yes. That is, yo, let's just go, that Last Stand film, possibly like the high, let's say... Oh no, maybe Kingsman is a different one. So we'll come on to that in a minute. But other than that, probably highest budget film in which of Vickers features. Yeah, like Arnold possibly. Schwarzenegger, Johnny Knoxville, probably yeah. highest um highest actor uh yeah. pay anyway for, for it. Uh, aside from right aside from Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool, there's a yes. lot of an aside. So it's probably top five. Um mm. but it's there, isn't it? You know, Vicky, 
uh, Vicky the Vickers in the Last Stand film firing out the back of a school bus. Um, that's cool. It, it one of the things that sort of links that to all of the other films is it's this icon, it's this totemic piece that they they actually do a lot. It's a character in a way. They yeah. do a lot of um, of the film. The writing is about that gun being there um, and that fight you. Know, you being in place um otherwise pretty nonsense film but uh it's got vickers in it so when i saw johnny knoxville's costume on ebay i was like almost tempted thankfully not completely tempted to purchase it for the collection um it would <laughs> you know, we've probably bought a lot more useful things yeah, with the, like six hundred yeah, dollars or something things. than it was <laughs> um, although now we've got a colt m1915 vickers in the collection it feels like we perhaps could um, we could either put it with Home Guard LDV kit or Johnny Knoxville's costume. You know, yeah. the you know, curator team can decide. Uh, <laughs> I think I know which they'll go for. Um, yeah. But but yeah, may, maybe we'll have um, maybe we'll have some wild geese stuff one day and some you know last that stand stuff and maybe somebody will see me in a Deadpool suit. So um, wow, yeah, okay, you know, sat in wow. front of a Vickers with with a, with a flag that says bang. Mm. Because uh, that's the only other that is probably the highest budget, the highest probably is, grossing yeah. probably film is. that features a Vickers, you know, and it's just sat there behind um, behind Deadpool and uh, TJ, you know. That's just it. Yeah, the they're scene. Doing, when they're yeah, it's just there the in the background. Together. Yeah, it's just when there. well, when they're interviewing people, that's for it. the team, isn't it? Yeah, mm. um, that when that came out, the number of people that must have taken that photo in the cinema. And shown and sent it to me straight away. It was quite a good number. Bridges phone melted. Like, you know, the amount of messages. Can you put your can you put can you put your phone down, please? And it's like, oh, no, no, I've got to take a Vic, take a photo of the Vickers for Rich because he won't have seen it. Um, now a Disney film technically as well. So there we go. Yes, yeah. another Disney, Disney link there. Spin off. Finally, yeah. they can get you on a retainer for something. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, so, they'll be paying you for just, something. Ah, oh, I do it for the love. We've talked about some positives of the Vickers Gunning movies, um, picked up some nice scenes we liked. But Rich, what's your one of your biggest bugbears, one of your biggest annoyances when you see a Vickers in film? Obviously, knowing it as well as you do, what what things do they do people get wrong? What things? What myths have been born out of the Vickers in film? Well, it's never used in the right role. You talked about like the stock film footage and stuff like that. Bridge mm. Too Far has it. Um, yep. You know, Bridge Too Far has it. Actually, firing overhead fire. Um, when 30 cores start moving off. Yes. The so, briefest of you know, brief scenes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like absolutely so brief. briefest brief. So it doesn't, doesn't even, you know, it'll fit on IMFDB, but it won't even be on my, you know, until you start thinking about it. Well, oh, in that same sequence, there's another bit of peer footage that no one remembers. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, okay. there is. Yeah. There's a team yeah. that gets gets killed in that initial ambush from the woods. And yes. the, the, the peer goes one way and they go the other. Uh, and that's it. And in and in that scene, that they actually did fly through the air because they got their timings wrong, didn't they? Because it was Tim, <laughs> Tim Moran. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> apparently so. Yeah. Apparently. yeah. Wow. But yeah, yeah, so I mean, that's like, oh, you know, I'm trying to think. That's probably the only time that the Vickers gets used in direct fire, um, yes. in a film. It's not talked about. It's it's not. You can't. You can barely attribute it to it. Mm. Um, in a lot of roles, it's used semi properly, um, but actually, a lot of the time, it's just nonsense. It's just we've got this gun that fires lots of bullets, and we're going to use it like that. Um, it looks good. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of other times that I do. So I like that. I, as I said, desert rats. You know, big defensive position. You can imagine one fixed line fire. You know, they've got arcs and stuff to cover. Um, too late. The hero is very similar. They've got it covering that big piece of open ground where the guys are going out and back on patrol. The Vickers would be ideal. The Vickers would reach out to cover that whole um, range like the mortars would. They don't actually use it in that role, though, when they are covering the guys coming back at the start of the film and stuff like that. You know, you could, you could easily crank it up and start to put the bullets down onto that um, tree line a lot more effective than you would the mortars. So it it's almost, you know, they're showing it right, but they're not building it into the story too mm -hmm. well because when you get everybody coming back from a patrol then i imagine it's like oh okay well that, that ends that then that wasn't as you know it wasn't as terrible as we wanted it to look um and that as we talked about that whole swinging traverse thing you know everybody thinks of it, uh, a machine gun on a tripod can be swung from left to right um 
and you know just just fire all day long um and it can't it won't hit and it won't hit what you're trying to hit it you know it, it's not um it's, it's a suppression weapon but not necessarily you in that in that same way you need to be firing at 1500 rounds a minute to try and get that sort of um swing yeah and that, that continuous that. Mm, yeah sort that of wall of lead swathe of fire it's, it's those sorts of things where you that do get frustrated. I mean, they frustrate everybody, don't they? If somebody knows some, about something, then if something's not being used in the way that you think it should be, then it's going to go, oh, okay. But you know, for most of these things, there's no film about the Vickers machine gun. Um, no. We were nearly involved in one a few years ago. That did like so many films just didn't happen. Uh, it's it's one of those where it's um, you know it would be nice there's some real good stories out there real good get me there's some really good um stories and uh accounts and stuff that would be great you know you know and um it's not a plug but it is uh can loan you know is a great account of um a oh, small unit in action great yeah yes wouldn't it just or a series mm-hmm. you know do the band of brother stuff um yeah. you know where you could really actually use the vicars to portray some really interesting stories around mm. it um you know there, there's uh, i just had a whole horrible horrible flashback it's like the, whether the um vicars in is in uh, life and times of colonel blimp or whatever it is that film i think it might be because the, because there's the opportunity to do lots of things over um over it's lifetime as well yeah yeah, yeah. um you know because because it does span so much and you could actually follow you know individuals and have this kind of stuff going on. so there's a lot more opportunity with a vickers um than than we've seen i i, I think you know we just we see lots of untrained machine gunners using the vickers as well and in all serious they wouldn't know how to use it you know and yeah. they perhaps if somebody had never fired a Vickers, I mean, Matt, you've had the opportunity to fire a Vickers now. You've uh-huh. fired a Bren before. You can't mm-hmm. just pick up the Vickers. Uh, Robbie, you have in the past as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you can't just start using a Vickers if you've stumbled across it on the back part of it. You'll no. never open the bottom cover for a start. Um, yeah, yeah and, and that's yeah. it. You're done then. If you don't, <laughs> yeah, do exactly. that, if you don't know that yeah. the bottom cover exists, then that's <laughs> yeah. it, game over. Like The weapon's inoperable number of times when you do turn a vicar's t- upside down is just to get it clear from that <laughs> shutter true. and so you can open it that's the thing it's like in the way ahead yeah we talked about the way ahead when i came on um mm. and you know the guys just run up and start using the vicar's they wouldn't have known how to do it i mean they might well they fire in of... they fire in bren bursts in that don't they so he fires yeah, in do. very short yeah. control bursts mm. yeah they do and we got we have to talk um, about that movie because it's like it is one of the best depictions of of, of the Vickers on film because it shows yeah. that the barrel two jacket can too the barrel the barrel yeah. um jacket can run dry and it needs to be refilled yeah. so you have to get really Peter Houston off to, to bring up the beer and the wine <laughs> to fill up the, the, the jacket it's essential <laughs> yeah that's another thing as well they most movies never show it with like most of the water cooling that's a really good point elements yeah. used mm. that, that that's it um maybe not a myth but something that I know that I've since learned because obviously I've only ever fly blank. So since seeing you your guys shoot at Bisley that you did a couple of weeks ago, seeing the amount of steam that comes out of the side of one of those things is is yeah. something yeah. that movies never do anyway, but it it seems like a goal. Wouldn't it be dramatic if they did not want to do it? Wouldn't yeah, that, exactly. You know, yeah. Steam coming off a of vicar, you know, <laughs> look good. in a film. It would yeah. just like don't worry, lads. You don't need to. There would have down. to be a drop, like a pickup shot, though, of the the condenser can being shot away. That rich, come on. Let's... That would look amazing. Imagine that in a fit, like a. There's got to be a reason. This movie, <laughs> and it just comes away. Yeah, no, it'd be, yeah, it'd be good. It's um, it would be amazing to see one just like properly steam and that cork pop out, which it shouldn't yeah. do. But yeah, it would be amazing to see that. Um, it could give someone's great. position right, away, I'd, couldn't it? Or something like I'd, that in a movie. Yeah, it's a golden opportunity. It. Peter Houston off some, you know, uh, uh, booze Stash. run there to get <laughs> yeah. to get the uh, to get the vicars going. I think that's a um, it, um, alcohol. I'm not sure whether it cools it down better or worse, but it certainly would stink. Um, Another myth Ch- test. Charlie's War uses champagne in one of the comic strips to mm. cool down the vicars as well. 
Um, mm. So, so yeah, again, you know, still or sparkling, which works better. Does that come from somewhere? Wow, it, I don't know. Um, no. An imagination. I was like, it's better than the piss myth. Let's face it, though. True. Better than the piss myth. It's in Machine Gunner 1914, 18, or Crutchley. You know, it's in one of the. Oh, is um, it? Pers- yeah, yeah, yeah. So they do talk about it, oh, okay. um, and then they talk about uh, you know making tea, but they're like in chapters apart. Yeah, you know, so yeah. It, it, <laughs> not it not is, with the piss. It is not mentioned. Tea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, what did you yeah. do first? Um, chicken and egg, piss or tea, same sort of thing. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, it, it, there's a lot of myths there to to work out, isn't there? But um, you know, I, I think you have to let it cool down first before you uh, pee directly. And there's tracer in that belt as well, which is, as we know, wouldn't be the case. No. in the in the belt in way ahead yeah. yeah 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 that's like proper drawn on afterwards isn't it so, <laughs> um, yeah, great that's the best kind of tracer it is great so using using the guns differently using the guns like um by people that shouldn't the, the exception to that is one that i did have on my list of films i do like um is sahara but the 1943 version not the 90s version um because they have vickers in that and if you consider the the guys that would be um, that are in that group, we've got um, a Sudanese soldier, yeah, a um, I think it's a Mor- French Moroccan, um, there is. but um, the, yeah, Brit- the British sold the British soldiers. They were Royal all Medical using Corps. Vickers. Yeah, yeah, and there's a corporal. Isn't there? Aussie, I think as well, and, isn't there? I can't who the, yeah, there is. Aussie. Yeah. Like, you're whatever, but what you've got is basically everybody but the Americans in that and the Italian, but you know, German. Um, would have known how to use a Vickers. So when they when they do depict it in that when it is in that film, um, and that is a film where it's a bit uh, flipped um, flipped footage actually, so that it feeds from left to right just like um, the Brownings do and stuff mm. like that. Um, although I did catch a quick shot of where the Brownings feeding from right to left because that's also flipped. Oh so um, S- someone's been told flip the, all the, the machine guns. Flip scenes. the machine footage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the same shot yeah, just flipped, like, is it? For them to get away with it? No, 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 no. no. Okay. One, of, one of them's an, an M nineteen nineteen ah, flipped right. wrong, and then one's oh, the yeah, Vickers the flipped the yeah. other one. Weird thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a bit do. strange, but it's the whole the Germans yeah, have German got them in that run film from as well, the left, mocked up as like right. Maxims, if I remember. Yeah, right. Well, have they? Yeah. Have they? I IMFDB says there has. I'd say go back and look at it again. I think there are oh eight fifteens. Um, okay. Well, so, I, I have yeah. no qualms with watching that film again because it's one of my favorites. It's fantastic. So, yeah. isn't yes. it? I'm looking it's, forward it's to it when we do finally get around to it. I like the yeah, James Belushi one from the nineties as well. That's it's not bad. It's like you would think. Yeah, oh, but God, I wanted that to sticks terrible. shades on them and sing. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's my James Belushi is the one that sticks shades shades on and sing. So um, yes, yeah, so him stood out of a tank is uh, is a bit strange. <laughs> um, but the, whereas my Humphrey Bogart is stood in a tank not singing. Uh, it's much much better. <laughs> so um, it's an all, it, it, the way they remade that actually is quite good. I, I do quite like the fact that they re- that, that was a classic. It could have sat there quite happily. They yeah. remade it, and I don't yeah. think they did much harm to no, both no, it films didn't. It in didn't. doing so. Um, you could see how that could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, good but, director though, Brian Trenchard Smith. He did, did exactly. a good job. It was a labour of love for him, I think. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. That's another one that could have had a remake. You could remake that again now, wouldn't you? Yeah, you with, could. With, Sahara, with a, again. Yeah, yeah, but do it with War Daddy from Fury to really get in people's crawls. Just have a flashback. Like, it was when we're in that Lee Grant in the desert. <laughs> it just goes back, <laughs> flashback, and it's just a remake of Sahara. <laughs> just with Brad Pitt. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it. I'll be honest. If, if the cinematography is as nice as Fury, I'd be fine with that. To round out, any of you guessed what the probably the earliest depiction of the Vickers in British service in a film that isn't a pseudo propaganda documentary film? So not the Mons one. Is it a not film the about one, the Boer War? Which is great. Not the Mons one. one. Yeah. Is it a film about the Boer War from like nineteen? No, it's not. It's a World War One movie, and Ooh. you will you will be amazed that it was made by D.W. Griffith of uh, Beth Nation fame or infamy. Right. Um, okay. And it's called uh, Hearts of the Hearts of the World. And there's a five arch vicars in there. Is there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is stunned. Is <laughs> wow. Is stunned, being being used by uh, British troops. Uh, um, oh, wow. And it's a silent movie, very, very much of a classic silent movie ilk. 
with lots of like reaction pickup shots and stuff. Oh, I love it. Do either of you know what the the last film depicting the vicars in British service was? Anyone guess? Can't count wild geese, can you? Not really. No, not really. I mean, they were British cat-batched, service. But they weren't in service. And there's none no. in Helen Korea. Nope. Oh, stumped then. Nah. Okay, on. so it's 1961's Conga, right? And this is the only British Conga. Conga. This is the only British King Kong movie, I, I think. Really? 1961. <laughs> Right, yeah. and they, they, I, I couldn't make out on the the clips that I watched because there's a few clips of of the trailer, the original trailer and stuff on 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 YouTube, but I, I was watching it, and there's two, there's a pair of two vicars that are brought up. There's a load of lads with number fours and um, stems, mark twos, and then two vicars are brought brought up, and I think some armored cars, uh, might be a dingo. Oh wow! Uh, and they all they all open up on um, Conga, which. It's not the real King Kong. It's actually um, a, a very naughty scientist has brought a chimpanzee back from the, the jungle with him, as well as some seeds that make things grow super big. And, okay. um, yeah, so Conga is a chimpanzee. That is it comes... like a hammer horror or something? It's is not it... even hammer horror. It's not even oh, that. Wow. Oh, wow. It's, <laughs> okay. it's an Anglo-American pick, apparently, from 61. Anyway, so he's, he's, it's really badly um, animated as well. So he's silhouetted against Big Ben, and the vicars open up, and that's what gets him. Incredible! Wow! Yeah, can I? That's <laughs> be amazing. Hell of a thread but, that will be on Twitter, Matt. <laughs> be a hell of a thread. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to find it. So, so there's a couple of things I want to do out of the back of this pod and, and everything. Is years ago I had a, a, a listing on the website of um, all different films, you know, picking up on what Dolphin written in 1994. Um, and IMFDB is not great for it, so mm, I want to put no. those together. So scenes like five arch top covers in silent films, and also Vickers in Conga. Just some screenshots of those. But if anybody else knows any that we you know aren't there, um, perhaps we share the link to the page with this, and then they can submit um, yeah, you know, when this goes live. Um, but there are some notable exceptions where the Vickers never appeared, and I'm sort of thankful for the fact that it was never in Star Wars. Um, you know, so many <laughs> other give British it time, guys... Rich. They're making a lot no, of Star no, Wars TV I've, shows. I've told them no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <it's>, um... <laughs> I told him. Told... Ray <laughs> up Disney. No, Disney, no. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it ever would now. You've got to cut Vickers up, which is why I'm thankful for it, because I think there would be yes, a lot more, true. a lot less yeah. Diax um, or a lot less mm, Vickers about yeah. if there were, and they'd possibly... Having tried to buy a Sterling SMG, I can tell yeah. you that that is very much a thing that is... Yeah, yeah absolutely. Probably. It was never in Unit. It was never in Doctor Who, which actually I've yeah, always oh, wow, thought... Okay. Yeah, yeah, so um i'm not a big doctor who fan they had the whole they're... kennel and stuff in that didn't they yeah, general no, whoever it was they did. Brigadier, they brigadier, did. That was it, yeah. brigadier yeah but unit's an interesting thing so unit includes a lot of proper british yes. service kit of the period mm. um the 60s and slightly outdated stuff um and you can just imagine like series 2a landers and stuff like that rocking around with vickers on the back for you mm. but they never appeared in that so i'm not i don't know whether i'm thankful for that or not because you know i don't know but it, it's one of those where I almost yeah. would have expected it to Vickers see versus um, the Daleks. See that would have been cool. That'd yeah, been cool. that'd have been iconic, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would have been absolutely because mm. just sort of the one film that we haven't really talked about that I know is um, has been a, a bane to Robbie as, I, as soon as I mentioned it. I know what's um, coming. Which 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 we've managed to get through like the pod without mentioning it, and I'm sure he wanted to finish before we do. <laughs> so if people can hear this, it means Robbie wasn't brave enough to edit it out. No, I'll keep um, it. In. I'll keep it. In. <laughs> But let's get crack, get cracking with George Formby. 1943's Get Cracking. Yeah. Absolutely. Like the Vickers is the character star in that. Um, doesn't play the ukulele, uh, doesn't no, sing. Sadly. But is George um, does three times. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's relatively few times for a George Formby film. I mean, you've got a point. We're lucky yeah. on that one. But the but that probably is the most accurate depiction of the Vickers <laughs> arriving in the home, you know, arriving in home guard service, being there. There's two Vickers in it because they do a little bit of the way ahead stuff, swapping about a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, you know, absolutely, they want this Vickers machine gun in their platoon, and, and the other platoon have an armored car, and they'll you know, swap a you know, steal stuff and move it about. I think it's amazing. It, it's an amazing film for many reasons. That amazing doesn't mean good, just means you're amazed by it. Yes, it's, um, it's, the, <laughs> the part the home guard, that's what we're talking about off air. The home guard depiction in it, obviously, it's 1943 and it's when the home guard yeah. were at their peak, peak of their powers. 
Um, so they've got their proper webbing. You've got the 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 half the haversacks with the one like fastener. They don't have two. They only have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah proper home guard. Yeah, sacks, yeah, proper. They're proper like three hundred three rifle pouches as well. So that's really good mm -hmm. depiction of home guard. They're really. He I mean, I don't know why they're so bothered about this Vickers gun, considering they've got Brownings and Tommy guns and everything else. They're really well yeah, armed. Just like non shot <laughs> in like home gun a pub. Back yeah, wall. exactly. Yeah, it's like so the most well-armed home guard units I've ever seen. But it's an interesting MacGuffin for the whole plot of the, of the movie, where they're sort of trying to prove that they're the better home guard battalion. It's, it's not a bad, but a picture of the home guard I actually think is quite good. But the just the George George the comedy movie. is Dad's Army esque. Oh, yeah, yes, so it's it a very much is the, the sort yeah. of the, the script is Dad's Army. The kit is what people want to see out of the Dad's Army new movie, mm. um, but but wouldn't because it wasn't about that. It was about dad's army. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and then you add George Formby to like ruin it. No, um, to, you know, to, um, <laughs> enrich, to, um, enrich, it. Uh, Good, enrich, yeah. enrich. That's yeah. right. In 1943, if the war wasn't bad enough, you had George <laughs> Formby singing as well. Yeah. I, I think at some point that possibly not with me, but that deserves a whole foth episode. Maybe if there's like a, um, a George Formby historian or an we association go. we'll have to get the head of that yeah. on yeah. talk about that with him that'd be great yeah. that'd be the rob that'd be the week that rob takes off it'd be like no i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> not available Matt. that week Matt. Yeah. you're gonna have to do that one on your own mysteriously my internet went down oh <laughs> <laughs> it's been fantastic to talk to rich again about vickers guns um if anybody uh, didn't know he did a amazing series of events for the 100th anniversary of the disbandment of the machine gun call this year and on his channel uh, the Vickers Machine Gun Research uh, Collection and Research Association on he, YouTube. He was reading that then, and he still got that it. Was, that was, yeah. <laughs> um, you can go and find his channel Not on just YouTube, me. and there is a, a plethora of Vickers Gun content there for you to enjoy. So, Rich, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me again. No, any any time, any time. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. It, as Rob said, always a pleasure talking about Vickers guns. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check us out on the various platforms that the podcast can be found on. Please do leave us a review on uh, Apple Pods and wherever else, because they really do help us spread the word about the podcast. Check out our website, fightingonfilm.com. You can find all of our back catalogue on there. And who knows, you might have a fourth inch. Catch you next week, folks. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.